Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 8 of the FIFA 23 Everton Career Mode. God, it really is going fast. This part of the video, um, as I mentioned in the last one, I would normally read out some comments, but I am filming this directly after the previous one. So, uh, yeah, there's really no comments for me to read out. However, today's episode is going to be a massive one. We are finally in the January transfer window. We're going to be getting some incomings and outgoings, hopefully. And we are fourth in the Premier League. This is massive. That's what she said. These are the games that we've got coming up. I mean, the last episode was immense with the results we were getting. I mean, we beat Aston Villa, we beat Wolves, we drew to Wolves in the first leg of the FA Cup, we beat Leeds, and then I think the Fulham of the first game. I can't believe I've only just recorded that and I've already forgot. I'm pretty sure it were 3-0 win. So yeah, unbelievable episode. Like I said, we're fourth in the Premier League, which I didn't expect with the runner form that we had, like before a couple of episodes ago but today's episode we've got fulham again and um, we've got forest newcastle and then the january transfer window to try and wrap up and hopefully shape the team very well by the end of the season but before we get into any transfers it is the first game of the episode we are against fulham at home we managed to beat them 3-0 away from home using the player highlights defensively and attacking so i'm going to do the exact same because this episode is going to be jam-packed we are going to reach the end of january so we just need to get through as many games as possible and just focus on transfers. As well as not butchering the results because we are top four, so we can't butcher that whatsoever. I am playing the strikes 11. Marshall is in incredible form, so hopefully he can carry it on. And I'll tell you what, the Fulham team's not looking bad, so hopefully three points at Goodison Park. And you never know, we might go for the league. First opportunity. I didn't even realise what happened on my screen. Fulham are in. Jordan Pickford, unbelievable save. I didn't even realise what was going on. I completely forgot we were loading into a game. Fulham with a second opportunity. They are all over us at the minute. 33rd minute. They've got a corner. We've probably beaten them with the aerial threat we've got. Defensively, anyway. Great. Well done. Can we counter-attack? I thought they were going to let us counter-attack. Everything attack here. It's finally allowing us to put our stamp on the game. DCL with a bit of space. What's he done that for? I'm not... I swear to God, I've not even pressed that. Fulham have got a crushing opportunity. I did not press pass whatsoever then. What the hell? Seriously. If that's the only opportunity we get all game, Jordan Pickford's keeping us in it. Okay, we've got an opportunity. Everton counter-attack. And you just... Please don't, like, pass without me asking to. Because that just sent me off guard. Play DCL through. Great pass. Marshall. I've played it a bit too late. I've lost ball anyway. Another opportunity to counter-attack in the 72nd minute. Wow, this game's going quick. Come on then. Marshall. I can see Marshall. I've played Marshall. Is it going to reach him? It has reached him, but the defender got in the way. Everton attack 78th minute. We've just not had the best opportunity. I mean, the best opportunity we had, the game screwed us out by making me pass to a player I didn't even want to pass to. I didn't even click pass. But... Moving on from that, love a bit of play. Play Gordon. Should, probably should have played Onana. Onana, do you want to carry on? Onana, why have you stopped running? Why do you let a six foot four? We need you at box. Onana, he took that personally. Okay, we lost the ball. Oh my God, D-Cell's through. 84th minute. No pressure, no pressure. Calm, calm. DCL, come on. Come on, DCL. Come on. Great finish, DCL. 84th minute when they're needing the most. He finishes it. Is that please full time? It is full time. The last kick of the game. Well, the last opportunity we had and we scored. I don't know what happened to our opportunities that game, but they were absolutely dreadful. Just, especially the one that I didn't even click to pass with DCL. It's just headed it to a random player. But it's a win. We move on. Transfer offer for Michael Enko. I've not really thought about letting him go, but they're offering quite a bit of money for him. 79 rated, 23 years of age. I've not really had any complaints about Michael Enko. I think he's been solid defensively. Um, attackingly, he's not really had much influence, but I mean, I don't really care. Defensively, he's been unbelievable. I will negotiate his Villarreal, so I think it's only fair, but I'm going to want a big chunk of money off him. And we need to look for a brand new left back. I did not expect them to accept that. £38 million pounds for Michael Enko. What is the world coming to? I did not expect for us to get anywhere near that amount of money, especially with the overall at the minute. I actually need to get a new left back. Now, I've added a left back on the shortlist. I don't even know if this transfer is going to go through for a particular reason. I'm hoping it does. It's going to be a player returning to the club, one that we should have never let go. I don't understand why we did. But Luca Digne, I would love to bring him back from Villa, bring him on, bring him to the club he loves and he misses. don't know why we ever let go of him, but is it going to let... 
he's actually gonna let us out. I've got to do this. And 24 million pounds, unbelievable steal if we manage to get this contract done. I don't wanna butcher this. How are we feeling about this, lads? Have I got mixed opinions because it's a play we're bringing, actually bringing back to the club? But let's be honest, if we all got the opportunity to bring him back, I'm pretty sure the majority of us would. And we've not butchered it. Luca Digne has returned to Everton. I am... Um, I didn't expect this to happen. I didn't plan for this to happen. I didn't plan to let Michael Edco go. But for £38 million, pounds, you can't really complain. We've managed to bring a fan favourite back in Luca Digne. I am very happy about this. I think he's like 84, 85 rated on this game. So, it's been massive. One of our best players in our club currently. I am... Um, like, I'm shocked because I didn't expect Michael Inco to go. I didn't want him to go. But Luca Digne has returned to the club. He's gone as number three. And he's looking good in the new Everton kit. We should have never let him go. The board was stupid to ever back Rafa Benitez in this deal. Same as a Hammers one. But we brought him back. And the board, I don't know how they're going to feel about this. Because they were the one that accepted him to go. We got C with the price. I paid £24 million, I think it were. Probably overall. 82 rated. So we could have saved £4.6 million. Pounds. I've got a C rating. It's he's, he's been compared to Holgate, which is, is is a left back. So I don't know why that's happening. The next match of the episode, we are still in the Premier League. We are playing against Nottingham Forest away from home. They've somehow not got the Forest Stadium in the game. They've still got Ivan Tony up front. That is an unbelievable signing by them, to be fair, on the game anyways. Um, strongest 11, not much changes. I am starting Michael Enker this game because... I mean, it could potentially be his last game for Everton, so I want to make it, make the use stream while I can, because like I said, it could be gone after this. Strongest 11, we are away from home. I'm going to be playing defensive and attacking highlights yet again. And hopefully we get another three points, because it would be mental if we do. Best opportunity falls towards cross an opportunity. Jacob Ramsey's picking up ball. Don't see many options, I'm just going to go midfield. Like I said, if, you, if you've not played this game yet, or you're starting a career mode, don't always listen to FIFA. So if it says cross an opportunity, nine times out of ten, you're probably just better off playing it around and trying to work off shot. Because cross, like every time I get a cross an opportunity, I cross the ball in. There's just nothing to really work on in the box. So it's just a missed opportunity. Marshall picks up ball. Marshall. Come on then. Great pass. Oh, Jacob Ramsey tries to play it through gap. It's not quite gone through. Forrest have got a cross an opportunity. Let's not allow them to cross them into the box because I've got Ivan Tony. That's not a player that we should be letting in in our box because he scored for, against us before. Go on a gear. Ah, he's not been able to. Tony's got ball on edge of box. Goes for the shot. I thought that went in. Oh my god, DC has got a great opportunity here. I don't know what to do. He's not the most skillful player. He's not the most quick. If I go that side, try and cut in maybe. I've managed to get past him. But defenders come back. Ramsey. I lit it with Ramsey. Is that a free kick? No. Okay. Not going for his counter attack. This is quick. This is. There's not even no breaks in between. It's just straight up action. Come on, then Morgan gives right. Michael and Cut. Okay. What was the point of that? Um, is this game glitched? We've kicked off the second half and it's not gone into the highlights. Are we still playing or is the game going to cut anytime soon? Have I broken the game? What is going on? Has Forrest still got an attacking opportunity? I think they have. I haven't turned his through on goal. It's hit the post. It's fell back to him. They have cut him out. EA, thank you so that were a guaranteed goal. And they've cut it out. We're still nil-nil, so they've not given him the goal. Play it on Arna. Play it out to Jacob Ramsey. Ramsey. Play it in. Dinier's has come on the pitch. He's captaining us, which is weird. But he's made his debut against Nottingham Forest, and they've got a penalty. This is exactly what happened last time. I mean, we didn't batter him as much as we did at home, but... Pickford, come on. Come on, Pickford. Iron Tony, back pocket. He's unbelievable at penalties. He's unbelievable at saving penalties. Jordan Pickford, I were doubting him. I were going to sign a new goalkeeper, a younger one, but what's the point? He is unbelievable. Jake Ramsey, please move up more to your left. Okay, that's not the ball I expected. Oh, it's just not worth... Wait, who's Dinye come on for? Is Dinye come on for a right back? What? That game was a complete mess. That that game's just left my brain absolutely baffled. And it is confirmed, Michael Enko, that was his last game for Everton Football Club. I keep saying it, I did not expect this to happen. I didn't want this to happen. But for £38 million, it was hard to say no. 
And to be fair, I asked for 38, well, I asked for 40 originally, and they come back with 38. They were just... I can't reject that, but... Michael Enko, thank you for your services. You are unbelievable playing in real life. I apologise, I didn't want this to happen. But it's happened. I see how the board rate it. 38 million pounds, Villarreal. Price rating, surely an A. Yeah. If that wasn't an A, I'd have cried my eyes out. So play value, 20 million pounds. I got 38 million pounds for him. It's a good bit of business, but it still hurts me to say that I got rid of him. Now, moving on from the Premier League, we're going to have a little break. We are playing in the FA Cup. I think this is a round of 32. We are against Luton Town. We managed to beat Wolves in the second leg um, in the round of 64. So, we've come down to this. We are against Luton Town. I am going to play attacking highlights with a rotated 11. Please don't bite me in the ass with this year. First opportunity for us was Everton can't attack third minute. If we get a goal early on, it will calm my nerves because these games are nerve-wracking, especially when it's so easy for EA to do you over. Exactly. Exactly like that. I played the pass, it's just took its time with it. Are we 1-0 down? Nope. Everton attack, ninth minute. It's just, we're going to have I know what it's going to do. We're going to have loads of opportunities. Awful opportunities, and then it'll get to like the 70th second minute, and Luton will either be 1 0 up or they'll have a penalty. But John Pickford seems to save them. Come on, then. I can't afford to have another leg, so the draw's just out of the question. Play it. Well done. Coleman. Coleman. Could have made that run. As at Price. Play it in. Gordon. Yes, Mopi. God, is it 0-0 oh, nil, nil, having not scored that McNeil? I'll tell you what, McNeil's got a delivery on him in real life. I don't know how, how he's not our corner taker, but... Great ball. Hog it. Oh, he's not me. It. Look at Dinier. With his full debut. I completely forgot Dinier was starting this. I ain't got a backup left back. I really do need to pull in Cuckoo out of loan. Penalty kick for it. I thought that was going to be Luton. I don't know why I thought that was Luton. More pay. Please score this. You are best set piece taker on pitch. Well, penalty taker, yes he is. Goalkeeper's right, uh, left hand side. Saved it. That is Porsche stamp top bins, and the goalkeeper saved it with ease. mopay has got another chance, one on one. Well, he's got a defender. But I'll play. I've held like three bars of power on that, and he's tapped it. <sighs> yeah, attacking highlights just ain't for me. I said I was never going to play him again, but look at me now. Come on then. Gray. Price. Garner. Play it. Gordon, is he onside? It doesn't really matter. Goalkeepers turn into a manual Neuer performance, but we are in the 80th minute. Still nil-nil. This is setting up for a Luton winner. I am telling you now. Because there's just... No one. Absolutely no one. Gray. This is... I don't know what to do. You really didn't allow me to keep the ball then. That is an absolute joke. And now we've got to play another leg, have we? We've got to play another leg. Never play attacking early highlights, lads. Now, after that awful, abysmal game that EA call attacking early highlights, we are moving on to Newcastle at home. Massive game. Um, I think they're like 10 points behind us, so hopefully a bit of breathing room. Hopefully we should be able to get this done with ease. I'm not taking a risk. I'm not rotating any other 11. I've gone back to my strongest 11. We're going to be playing defensive and attacking highlights because attacking only highlights are absolutely dross. First opportunity does fall to Newcastle United. They've got a free kick. Cross opportunity, Trippier. I mean, I don't doubt his free kick ability. His free kicks are unbelievable. Nothing that will beat the one from the 2018 World Cup. Come on then. In the same position. All right, yeah. What? Wait, is that a corner? Never mind. Fire a free kick. Ignore me, yeah, yeah. Someone mark Jolinton and where's. Oh, I guess I dunk then. Whip, get it out. Gone again. Well done. St. Maxis picked it back up. Trip here back to St. Maxi. We've got to get this out. Yes, well done. Counter. Let's counter ref. Let's count. How many. What is going on? Why are we getting absolutely dominated by Newcastle United in the first half? We've not had a single opportunity. They're going to play same Maxi, aren't they? I've read it all day long. That is an awful ball. Isaac. Don't want him in our box. Coleman. I know you've not the pace he is, but you've got to keep it up with him, lad. 
He's lost it. St. Maxi in our box. Not great. Well done, Garner. That's a strike and a half. Pickford's equal to it. Everton solo run. This is Anthony Gordon. Your time to shine. Newcastle didn't want you to sign. And Newcastle fans slated the deal. But sure, why it's a miss. Okay, I've bottled that. I've absolutely bottled that. Pope, see you later. How's that not gone in? How has that not gone in? Seriously. Jollington. Picked it up on wing. Got to make sure... Isaac doesn't even bother coming into this game because he is deadly on this game. Just like he is in real life. Ryan Fraser, yes, keep him out. It's a great bit of ball. Bruno, great play by Newcastle. Didn't you got to get out to him? Is not Talkowski. Well done, lad. Great interception. They've got another opportunity. 70th minute is still nil-nil. It's probably going to be a draw because I don't see he's getting another um, attacking opportunity here. But we have got defensive work to do. Can't ignore Newcastle's attack. Because that can happen. Fire, oh, Giroud and Pickford. You are just another level above the rest. Another level. We've got a great opportunity here. I think anyway. DCL, if you want to make that run. He has. On his weaker foot. Can he score it? Questions have got to be asked about the goalkeeper there. Nick Pope has been known to make some awful, like, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. But all I'm saying is Jordan Pickford's England's number one. Don't even question it. Come on then. Defend this lead. 87th minute. DCL is on fire. We're at 19 in 30 or 19 in 20. Come on then. Tarkowski. Keep him out. Well done, Dinye. Great bit of uh, teamwork there. 89th minute. Newcastle attack. We've had two attacks this game, and luckily we've scored. But I'll tell you what, we're doing well defensively. But as soon as that ball goes into the box to Isaac, it's going to be a real problem. We've got a corner, 90th minute, can we finish it off? Can we win this game with a corner? How unbelievably good would that be? Gordon, dinks it in. Tarkowski, won that. And Nick Pop saved it, can I get it back out to Gordon? He can. Put back in. That were an unbeliever. You just would give that. You just why would you call that as offside? That was unbelievable if that counted. And it's a win. Why would you just not allow me to have that? Alex Awobi. That were disgusting. Transfer offer for yet again. A player that I just wasn't willing to let go or wasn't looking to let go. But we've had a transfer offer from Sevilla. A lot of Spanish clubs are coming in for our players. So I don't know what's going on there. They've offered 29 million plus Alejandro Gomez. I'm going to negotiate the deal because it is severe. DCL's injured a lot in real life. And there, there is some potential strikers that I would like to sign. Why did I drop it 5 million, lads? Why have I done this? Michael Enko and DCL going out in the same window. I don't think my heart can cope. <laughs> and here it is, is... It's gone. DCL has gone severe. It's not brought down. That's it. He's going to La Liga, playing Europa League football, I believe. I didn't plan for him to go. I really didn't. 83 rate, 25 years of age. Injury crisis in real life is beyond a joke. But he's saved us when he's needed. He's played well when we've needed him to. I just don't get where I go from this. I've not really had any strikers in line. Do I stick with Neil Mopé and just let him play it out or do I need to sign someone now, someone big for striker or shall we wait for the next window? We've got a C rate and that hurts even more. Oh, we could have only made 400k more profit. It is what it is. Marshall. We could play Marshall up front. He's been scoring goals. Where do I go from here? I can't believe what I've done. I was so excited. He got the spot reignited as well. Oh my god. I'll tell you... I'll tell you what, with these episodes, I'm finding out more and more I should be a rapper. I was getting the FIFA 21 Cavett Lewin out of him. I really was. He was scoring goals. He was playing really well. And 55 million as well. I'll tell you what, what is our budget? Because I don't know whether to go big or go home. I've got 134 million. But who do I sign? So I think I'm going to listen to the comment section about this deal. Yusuf Omakuku. 
I can understand why people may think this is an unrealistic deal. He is young, he's at Dortmund, he's actually playing really well for him in real life, scoring some very important goals. I'm tempted, I'm going to try for a loan, loan him out until the end of the season, and then depending where we are in the league, if we get Champions League, Europa League, or if I feel like it's a suitable position to sign him on a permanent and make it realistic, I may do that. So Yusuf Makuku, we've signed, we got him on a loan to buy deal with a £9 million option to buy fee. Um, like I said, I wanted to do that so it gives us time to build up our club reputation and hopefully get Champions League or some sort of Europe, um, European football. Then make the signing to make it look realistic. I just didn't want to sign a striker right now because if we do finish top four, top six, it opens up such a wide variety of players that we should be able to sign and we can get a better deal for... I know what I'm trying to say, but Makuku will have as a backup to um, Neil Mopé. And then in the summer transfer window, hopefully get European football and we could just get just a higher reputation for a striker. Now speaking about set pieces, it's hard to ignore one man. James Ward-Prowse, I think is a more realistic deal. Do I think it would happen in real life? Not while Southampton are in the Premier League, but if they went down, it's a different story. Anything could happen. I know I've signed him in previous saves, but I'm desperate for a central midfielder. I'm desperate for a set, um, set piece taker. I have to try and at least get this deal done. We've got the deal done, uh, roughly around £27 million, pounds, I think it were. I'm really happy about the signing. I know I'll sign him in pretty much every career mode I've done, but it was just a last minute signing. Probably should have researched more around it, but they were more realist realistic deal. Um, he's a great player, so it's not like he's an awful decision, but I've, I've seemed to sign him on every single one. Great set piece take, he's going to be a great leader. He's a great box to box midfielder. Him and Alexander Awobe are going to just compliment each other so much i'm excited for this deal let's just hope he can bang the free kicks that i've signed him for um the deal the financial side's not too bad at all but let's see how the board please don't let me down i mean there's no point even begging because i know exactly what it's going to be is 81 rated an f an f cheers for that and that is the transfer deadline day over i'm disappointed i think i could have done a lot more Signings, I mean, the outgoings I'm disappointed on. I mean, Carvalho and uh, Michael Encoj didn't really want to let go. It were really disappointing on my behalf. I apologise. But this is where I'm going to end today's video. Hopefully you all have enjoyed. Um, like I said, I apologise for the poor window. I just didn't want to spend too much money. And then it's, it's only a small majority of players that we can get because I want to sign realistic players. So uh, hopefully this is going to make it more and more... I mean, I've got a lot more pressure on me to try and finish in a European place, just so it opens up a wider different players, um, wide amount of different players, sorry. It's a lot of pressure now. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here. It's free. It goes a long way. Like I said, I will continue to upload, um, upload these daily as long as you enjoy them. And yeah, thank you all for watching. Take care, stay safe. I'll see you all next video.